Welcome to the woods. Quite a pleasant day today. A couple of days of rain, which has cleared the air up. Oh. And I was unsure what I was going to talk about, but I think I think I'm going to have a chat about what I see coming down the line again. And why I talk about disengagement from the system and what I mean by disengagement from the system. So I'm really covering points I've made before, but I feel I may need to elaborate on it. And to, and to make sure people understand what why it is I'm saying that disengagement would be a good idea and how you can disengage. But before I talk about why you should do that or how you should do that, it's important that we touch on why. Now I'm fairly sure most people watching this uh, video will consume quite a bit of content online and you'll know that the system we live within is fairly corrupt and it looks like it's uh, going to get worse and we can see that when we take into account all the facts and statistics that we glean from information that we watch online but it doesn't seem that way when you enter back into uh, normal life when you talk to people not in the, these circles their lives haven't really changed even having gone through this uh, shit show of the last 18 months everything's normal now or very nearly people are still wearing masks and distancing to a certain extent but I don't think people's lives have really changed that much and they're not really interested in why this happened or in what's coming as long as their lives remain relatively comfortable and that's how the system controls them with comfort they have the ability to earn a small amount of money watch the TV programs they enjoy of an evening and if they can't get abroad this year, it'll be a two week cope at Butlins or in a caravan. And they'll make the best of that. But for anyone who's looked a little bit deeper, that's done any research on the Great Reset and what seems to be coming down the line when I say seems to be, I mean everything they want to happen is actually happening. A lot of people poo-pooed the idea of uh, vaccine passports and digital identity. And I think most of us will understand now that that's definitely on the cards. So why would they want you to have a digital ID? Well, they're talking about using that for accessing everything. Without your digital ID, you won't be able to log onto the internet. You won't be able to open a bank account or operate your current bank account. You'll be unlikely to uh, enter 
a lot of shops without your digital ID. So you won't be able to shop. You certainly won't be able to shop online. It will also get rid of and in <laughs> you being anonymous <laughs> online because it will be linked to your digital ID. And it's going to be used, this is, this is only my opinion, but I would say within the next five to six years, you'll see a massive reduction in places that accept cash. And governments will slowly phase it out. And you'll be left with only electronic transactions. Unless, of course, you do something wrong, and then they can stop that. It may very well be linked to UBI, Universal Basic Income, which I think is a certainty to come into play as the fourth industrial revolution rolls out and technology automation reduces employment, people will have to be paid for doing nothing. And they're already trialling this in the UK. And the figure is about £300 a week. It's just under £270-something pounds a week. Money for nothing, it sounds like, but that money is paid by the state. And in order to receive that money, there's going to be rules. And if you break those rules, or don't abide by those rules, the money will be cut off. And then you'll have no money, no income. No way of um, doing anything. And I'm sure some of you sat out there will say, yeah, but they can't do that. They won't be able to do that. We'll see. We'll see. But for argument's sake, let's say they could. What would you do? You can't pay your rent. So you're going to lose your home. You can't buy food. So now you're starving and homeless. What have you got in place to ensure that you'll be okay? And this might sound like a shit hits the fan scenario. But if you follow the logical conclusion to what's happening now, what's very likely to happen in the future, it's something you need to be prepared for. And in order to prepare for something like that, in order to be in a position where you and your family have some sort of security you need to start to disengage from that system now and that might sound like an easy thing for me to say sat in the middle of the woods with my own cabin I've disengaged But there's things you can do. There's simple things you can do. Which today might seem insignificant. But in a relatively short period of time could be the difference between surviving and not being able to. 
So what can you do? How can you disengage? Well, the first thing is employment. If you work for, <coughs> it doesn't matter if it's a large corporation or a small corporation, if you're not self-employed, you're not in control of your employment situation, your bosses. So if there's a possibility of becoming self-employed, take it. It's always worth the risk. If there's a possibility that you can start a small business or a sideline alongside your job, do it. And if you've not thought of it before, start thinking about it now. Because if the job goes tomorrow, at least you've got something. At least you've got the sideline. And I'm not going to give you 101 different things that you could do. Simply go online, type it into Google, use their system to your benefit. But there are things you can do. The second thing is start growing your own food. Now I've got f enough land, but a lot of my stuff I could do if I had a postage stamp garden. You can grow beans in, a, in an old sink or a bucket. You can grow potatoes in buckets, in bags, in sacks. And you might be sat there thinking, growing a few potatoes and some runner beans, maybe some onions, courgettes. It doesn't really stop the cultural and civilizational decline in this country. And you'd be right. In order to do that, we need larger numbers of people pulling in the right direction. It's very difficult to get people to pull in any direction when they can't feed themselves. And you may have heard that there's going to be food shortages on the way. And I'm seeing it already. A friend of mine mentioned the other day that he went to the greengrocers to get a cabbage for his Sunday lunch. No cabbages. Now, as much as he doesn't like using the supermarkets, he thought no major problem. His greengrocer couldn't get hold of any cabbages. He'll pop down to the supermarket. No cabbages. We're starting to see some shortages coming through already. And seeing that this country imports around 70% of the food we consume these completely false and completely generated food shortages are going to affect people short term short term they're going to reduce people's comfort it will make people worry it will make people more inclined to do what they're told in order to get back to normal. We've seen this play out recently and they've learnt from that. Take something away, get people to do something in return for its return. So the food shortages won't be quite as dramatic if you can feed yourself. And you might not be able to keep a, a beef cow in your back garden, but you can keep chickens and rabbits. So you've got eggs and meat. And you don't have to go and spend your mon money at 
Tesco's or Sainsbury's. So you're denying the system your income and your capital, which you're keeping for yourself and which you can spend in other areas. So there's two ways you can disengage. I'd love to tell you all to uh, ditch the bank account. But I understand that in this day and age, that's nigh on impossible. And even I found over the last three or four years that it's becoming increasingly difficult. I've had no bank account for nearly 20 years. If I wanted to give my daughter some money, I used to be able to go to the bank, put it into her bank account. Job done. But I can no longer do that. I can't simply put money into her account. I've got to put it into my account and then transfer the money from my account to her account, which is quite difficult when I don't have an account. So now what I've got to do is give it to somebody else to put it in their account and then they can transfer it. It's a rigmarole. And little things like this are coming into play all the time. So I understand that many of you couldn't ditch the bank account and the store cards, and the credit cards, and the debit cards. But what you can do is take out the cash you're going to need for the following week. And where you can pay cash, pay cash. Don't use your card. The more people using cash, the harder it is for them to eliminate it. And they're going to try really hard to eliminate it. Don't make it easy for the system. Push back at every opportunity you have. So use cash. Grow your own food. Start a secondary income or become self-employed. And I'm not being flippant, I'm really not. Both of those things are possible. You could do it tomorrow. If you're completely reliant on the system, how do you fight it? How do you fight something you need. You can't. So if you can start to set up things for yourself and you're less reliant on it, when that shit hits the fan scenario happens, You're already halfway up the ladder. You're in a much better position than most people. So if you can disengage, do it. Even by doing one thing, even by planting one bucket of potatoes. That's money you haven't given the shop. That's money you haven't given Sainsbury's. That's money you can put towards something else. Something else to better your life and your family's life. Anyway, you lot. I did say ages ago I was going to try not to be negative. And I understand that some of this might sound a bit negative. But what I'm always going to try and do is at least come up with some solutions. But they're solutions to problems. Some problems are here and some problems are on the horizon. And in order to uh, be prepared for them, it's best to know what they might be. So don't take what might be coming, <laughs> I hate to say might, be coming down the road as a black pill because if we know about it 
we can do something about it. But if you know about it, it would be foolish to understand it and do nothing. So get busy, people, and I'll speak to you soon. Have a good one.